All right. Now, last year, the president declared a state of emergency on food insecurity in an effort to address the rise in food prices. However, food inflation persisted, with the National Bureau of Statistics reporting that it had climbed to 33.95% in May 2024, up from 22.41% the previous year. Food inflation followed a similar trajectory, reaching 40.66% in May 2024, compared to 24.82% of the year prior. While many Nigerians called for increased food imports to cushion the price hikes, Others argued that uh, against that, it's asserting that it would undermine local food production. Well, let's bring in public commentator now and media consultant Martins Yanitam Dixon to talk more on this issue. Good morning to you, Martin. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. All right, uh, we need to discuss this issue from food security because uh, as it is right now, most uh, prices of our staples have escalated. They've actually run so high, more than 300%. But we'll bring Martins um, after this quick break. Stay with us. All right, welcome back from that break. We apologize for that uh, break in uh, transmission. We have uh, Martin Yanatam Dixon joining us all the way from Adamawa as we look at this issue of food insecurity. Good morning to you, Martin. Thanks for joining us on Business Insight. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk about this issue of food insecurity. Since last year, a state of emergency has been declared by the president, and ever since uh, it's as though the emergency is not really um, having any effect because food inflation has actually skyrocketed over, uh, skyrocketed rather, over time. In your opinion, uh, what do we need to do before we get into the new policies that the federal government has uh, done in terms of, um, uh, you know, duty-free importation and all of that? In your opinion, how do we stem this issue of food insecurity in the bud? Now, there are a lot of factors that have contributed over time to the, the state that we are in now. And uh, part of it, I think, was a little bit of negligence on those who are saddled with the responsibility of overseeing uh, these processes and ensuring that we don't get ourselves uh, downhill where we are right now. Uh, one of the major issues that you have is that you keep hearing about government interventions rolling out of uh, uh, food, staple food or basic food for, for interventions to the people. And I would want to state here that the underlying factor is that most of these inter interventions don't get to the target people that it's supposed to get to, even though even if it gets to them, it gets to them in trickles. That is one. And then secondly, there is gross insincerity and corruption in the whole process. This is the major factor that has been affecting our most interventions and our policies of government. We roll out interventions and then it doesn't get to be implemented the way it is designed to, to have the effect that it's supposed to have on the populace and in the economy and the society at large. And then um, you, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and be expecting that you should be making progress or having a different result. It is mm. not possible. Now, you find that, that most times when these policies are being rolled out, they are rolled out uh, into the hands of people who subvert and divert them to, to personal pockets, who ensure that more than 90% of what government interventions are meant for are diverted into public, uh, private pockets and they don't get to the public and to the people. And so that is why you see us having uh, these issues of having uh, billions and, and hundreds of billions being rolled out every day and you cannot meet people on the streets or in our villages and our communities that will tell you that they benefited from this intervention. So uh, until we're able to fight this cartel that is bent at, 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 at sabotaging uh, these efforts of government. Every time you roll out money, you roll out food, food in phones, and then it's been diverted to either individuals or some private companies that are, pro are processing it for their, for their final products, using it as raw materials. Until this is being checked, we cannot be able to have the kind of uh, impact that we, we think we, we, we want to have. And uh, mm -hmm. it will keep degenerating. This is in, in addition to the insecurity that has made mm -hmm. a lot of arable lands uh, that have been cultivated not to be cultivated anymore. You find out that people who have who have hectares of lands in, uh, in 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 interior areas, fertile lands that they cultivate, cannot access their farmlands because of insecurity. They cannot 
have the kind of harvest that they wanted to be having. And so their contribution of those food items in, to the economy and to the, the, the food security is no longer there. It's been depleted by, by a very high percent. And how do we sit down and, and think that we'll not get to this point uh, of insecurity? You find that uh, food insecurity, so to say. And so much of our arable lands are not being cultivated. So it is actually uh, a danger that have been seen way ahead. But the, those who roll out these interventions do not have uh, evaluation or monitoring uh, mm. uh, uh, capacities. And so it gets into private pockets and then the, the economy and the country suffers for it. That is why we are where we are today. All right, uh, fine. Uh, in as much as you have talked about uh, all those uh, intervention put in place by the federal government, not really getting to the main farmers, you know, being subverted through corruption. But recently, like, let's talk about recent developments now, which is uh, uh, duty free importation of rice, beans, and some other uh, staples. In your opinion, is it the right way to go? Uh, we here is for about uh, 150 days to tackle this issue of food insecurity. A school of thought believes that uh, it will actually stifle uh, uh, local production. What are your thoughts exactly, uh, uh, Martins? No, definitely it will stifle uh, local production. That is one. It will. And then this intervention is, is short term. Mm. We are always rushing to give short term solutions to problems or challenges that should have proactive and projected long term uh, interventions. And this has been our major problem. We, we, we like giving handouts to to the to the populace rather than making them the other let me let me use this this idea instead of uh ensuring and teaching the people how to go fish we we are resorting to handing out fish to to the populace that is what the government has been doing over the years and even prior to this regime and in this regime you you find out that all we do is trying to say okay uh, uh 40,000 metric tons should be released from the strategic food reserve and be distributed to the people. And then, as much as we're doing that, to, to bring... I think uh, we lost uh, communication with Martin. Uh, he was talking about um, how this uh, new intervention by the federal government, that's uh, the duty-free importation for 150 days on some um, staples, would actually stifle local production. I do agree because... Yes, Martin, are you back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. We lost you at some point. Please go ahead, Martins. Yeah, okay. Until, until we get to the point where our long-term solutions are going to go hand-in-hand hand with the short-term solutions, we are not getting anywhere. You, you find out that, if you can remember, some months back, the, the federal government said from the Strategic Food Reserve, it is releasing uh, about 40,000 uh, metric tons of, of grains. Mm. We did not see those grains being distributed to the, to the poor people. Even at points where we saw people receiving these grains, to the, to, to the ridiculous point of people receiving rice in cups and in bowls. So how, how does this reflect the, the thousands of metric tons that have been said to be released? Where, where are the, the interventions going? So these are issues that we should talk about. And then there are no government policies and interventionary uh, uh, agricultural uh, projects that are deliberately being designed to ramp up food production. All we hear every day is that five, uh, 50, uh, 500 billion naira worth of fertilizers are being released and then you, you don't see the poor farmers getting access to those fertilizers. There are no provisions for seedlings. There are no provisions and interventions to reduce the cost of, 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 of chemicals that are been going to be used on the farmlands for, for weeding and then to ramp up production to make people to be able to cultivate double or much more uh, number of farmlands that they cultivate in the past. So as long as we keep uh, looking at production dwindling, Mm -hmm. And then our, our immediate handouts, not also getting to the populace, we, 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 we end up where we are today. People are hungry, people cannot afford to eat, and then ridiculously when government interventions come, it is given in cups and bowls. There are pictures of all these that happened in, in, in several states of the federation, and it was so embarrassing. And then now we are at a point where when we are supposed to be exporting maize, to be exporting cowpeas, uh, uh, wheat, and so on. 
Because with government, we need to cut work to do to ensure that we are sincere, we are honest, we are practicable with the kind of interventions that uh, we should be doing. I think the Minister of Agri uh, really need to begin to think outside the box. Mm. Okay, speaking of, uh, as we round off now, Martin, speaking of thinking outside the box, you've talked about intervention programs are not really getting to the direct uh, uh, people who need this intervention. You also have talked about how this uh, uh, duty-free importation on these uh, food items for 150 days is just for the short term. So what do we need to do to overhaul our agricultural production locally so that at the end of the day, uh, we will not just uh, be uh, sufficient in uh, the things that we need to eat, but also be uh, to have enough to export uh, you know, outside the country? All right, we seem to have um, lost uh, Martin. Uh, we uh, indeed would have loved for him to uh, tackle some of these issues that really are very pertinent because Nigerians need to have food in their stomachs and, of course, even enough uh, you know, to keep uh, for the rainy day, as it were. So that way, we will not just uh, uh, be sufficient in our own production, but also have so much you know, to export uh, and get um, uh, foreign, re uh, foreign currencies, uh, which have actually depleted in our reserves over time. I'm afraid that's as much as we can take on the show for today. I have been speaking with the public commentator and media consultant, Martins Yanatam Dexin, all the way from Adamawa State. That's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadunye. Many thanks for being a part of it.